You asked, so we delivered the three inch cutoff saw challenge. When we get back, I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. A couple of weeks ago, we reviewed the new Ryobi HP cutoff tool. Now, the new line of Ryobi HP tools are basically brushless tools that are meant to meet the compact market in a pro and DIY category. Now, some of the first things we were asked was, how's it compared to the Milwaukee three inch cutoff saw? Well, what better way to do it than to just put them head to head, talk about the features head to head, and then compare them side by side. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's not waste any more time. We'll go over to the workbench. We'll talk about the features. Then we'll make some cuts, come back, we'll finish this up. So here we are, the fight for all ages. No, just kidding. Uh, so both three inch cutoff tools, uh, you got the Ryobi OnePlus HP, and we've got the Milwaukee Fuel uh, M12 cutoff tool. Uh, model number on this, I think is 2522, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 2522. So dash 20 for the bear tool. And this model number is PSBC S02CN. I would never remember that one. Anyway, uh, and here's something interesting. So used to on the Ryobi tools, if it had the third prong in there, it would take advantage of the HP batteries. Well, this new HP line of brushless tools does not need that third prong. Uh, it's basically all that communication is built in. So it will still take advantage of HP batteries. Anyway, so we've got the Ryobi three inch cutoff tool. We've got the Milwaukee cutoff tool, three inch cutoff tool. We're gonna compare these, see which one cuts better, cuts faster, lasts longer, so forth and so on. Had several people ask me that when we reviewed the HP. So we thought we'd put them head to head and see. Now, as far as specs go, both of these are 20,000 RPMs. Well, I think they claim this is 19,500 and that the Milwaukee is 20,000. We're gonna call them 20,000, you good with that? Thank you. Uh, both of them have reversing switches, so that's pretty interesting and really nice for a cutoff saw because typically your, typically your uh, air cutoff tools do not have a reverse. So you can switch the lever here, put it in reverse, switch it back, put it in forward, so you get that forward and reverse action. The same here pretty much the same, same thing, except you do get an indicator here on the top that actually shows you which, uh, which way you're spinning, if you will, forward or reverse. You also have here on the shield or on the guard, uh, if it's in reverse, then you see which way it's spinning. If it's in forward, you see which way it's spinning, which way the wheel is spinning. So that's kind of a nice indicator right there uh, on the cutoff guard. Both of them also have an indexable uh, guard around the wheel. So you can just grab it with your hand and turn that and be able to index it to one, two, three, four. So four different spots indexing on that one, on this one, one, two, three. Looks like only three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four on this one as well. Uh, you get a blade guard on this one or a, uh, a cutoff shoe, if you will. I usually just take that off. Um, that may be nice for say, you know, cutting, um, you know, wood or plastic or something like that, where you want to rest it on there. But typically I'm cutting alloys, cutting metal, uh, and I don't want that guard on there. Anyway, so both of them have the indexing guards. Uh, both of them have an arbor lock right here to lock out that wheel so you can take the blade off. Again, this one's right here as well. Now, the Ryobi has the, uh, the LED light right here on the front of the tool, and the Milwaukee has it right here below the trigger where, again, it casts that light uh, down on the cutting surface, where, again, this one, a little bit closer to the blade. Which one works better? I'm not sure, but we can look at that in one moment. I did notice one interesting thing on these tools. Now, both of these tools, the Ryobi is blade left design. When you're holding it, it's blade left. The Milwaukee, when you hold it, is blade left. So both are blade left designs. Both of them had forward and reverse. Now, if I press the arbor lock on the Ryobi and want to take off the wheel, well, if I can get the Allen key in my hand, then it basically is just a standard thread screw. So lefty loosey takes it off. Now, if I go to the Milwaukee, again, blade left design, 
And by the way, bigger Allen key or bigger hex key, whatever you want to call it, push the arbor lock. I can't do a standard loosening, lefty loosey, if you will. I have to go reverse thread. So that was interesting to me that pretty much, you know, close to the same tool, yet one is uh, left-hand thread and one is right-hand thread. So just a little note there. Um, both of these come with a, uh, with a 3 8 arbor as well as a 7 16 inch uh, arbor adapter as well. I'm running a 3 8 wheel on here. Uh, that's what I get from my welding shop, um, my welding supply store. So, And by the way, I've got brand new blades on here, so when we test them, we'll both have brand new blades. Neither one of them have made a cut yet. Uh, so anyway, so you get a 3 8 and a 7 16 arbor on both of these. Uh, on the Ryobi, like we were talking about, we get this kind of cut off, cut off shoe or whatever you want to call that, a guide. Uh, the Milwaukee comes uh, with this setup, so which I would think would probably come in handy for maybe cutting plastics, wood, things like that. When you're wanting to follow a line and you want to hook up a dust extractor, you can do so. Uh, maybe even cutting tile. I'm cutting mostly alloys, mostly metals. I'm probably not ever going to use that, uh, but it could be a very handy tool for sure, especially again, like if you're wanting to pull uh, dust extraction off of there, it's always safer. So that makes sense. Now let's look at batteries on the Ryobi. This is an 18 volt tool on the Milwaukee. This is a 12 volt tool. So we got the M12 fuel and we got the 18 volt HP. Okay. We're running a two amp hour battery on the Ryobi. We're running a three amp hour battery or an XC 3.0 on the M12. And so you're saying, well, Tim, that's not fair. You're running a 3.0 for the Milwaukee and a 2.0 for the Ryobi. Well, if you look at watt hours out, you take amp hours times the voltage, which gives you, and it actually tells us right here, 36 watt hours out, okay? So 36 watt hours. Now, if you take 3.0 times 12, that's 36 watts as well. Well, actually, they're fibbing a little bit because it's actually only a 32 watt hour battery out. So still, even though this is a 3.0 battery, this is putting out less than this is. So should be pretty fair comparison, um, but we still got an 18 volt tool here and a 12 volt tool here. But just wanted to explain why we've got a 3.0 battery here and why we've got a 2.0 battery here. Still, if you look at output, max output, this battery is still outputting more through this tool than this battery is. Again, whole nother ball game if we look at, you know, what the, what the actual, you know, chipboard and everything else is calling for the motor to draw. So uh, another interesting thing on this tool is you get both an LED light on the base as well as an LED light here. So that may help, you know, that definitely could, could help in, in cutting in areas where you maybe have dim light, things like that. Um, it is pretty nice too. Both of these will sit up on their batteries, but if you're running the smaller battery on the Milwaukee, that may not be the case. Uh, as far as ergonomics go, these tools are pretty, pretty close in the handle. The, the, uh, the Milwaukee has a little bit more of a bulge here where the battery goes up in there, uh, where this one stays a little bit slimmer, but I don't know that I can feel a difference in here. Um, I do have a little bit bigger hands than your average, uh, but, and so I can feel a little bit of difference there. So somebody with smaller hands might notice that the, that the Ryobi is a little more comfortable. Uh, you also have rubber, rubber over molding that goes higher here on the handle on the Ryobi versus the, the Milwaukee. Um, but again, I'm not keeping my, my hand up there anyway. So I'm going to keep it here where I can shift that in reverse or forward or what have you. Uh, you do get an indicator light here for the battery, um, on the Milwaukee. Whereas on the Ryobi, they don't have an indicator light on here. Um, but if you were going up to like a 4.0 battery, then you'd be able to have an indicator actually on the battery. The 2.0 does not have that. But anyway, the, I believe the 3.0 and 4.0 does. So uh, definitely the 4.0 does. Um, so anyway, other than that, uh, you know, mesh screen here on the intake of the, of the tool on both of them. So we get the, I believe it's stainless mesh uh, to keep, you know, the metal and debris and residual out from the motor and then you get an open fan here on the output so that's basically where that air is circulating out of that motor um, and blowing that out and so you kind of get an open design there as well as here as well so both these pretty much set up the same let's go ahead and use this a little bit uh, make a few cuts on it and see if we determine any difference
Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to chalk up in the vise a few different substrates here. We're gonna cut some aluminum tubing. Should be really easy. I think that's one inch aluminum tubing. Um, then we're going to cut some flat steel, uh, just some flat steel bar. I think, I think that's a one inch by eighth inch flat steel bar. Uh, and we'll do three cuts on each of these. And then the last thing we'll do is the half inch. Um, we may time some of these cuts. Listen, these aren't, these aren't tools that you push. You're gonna have to let them cut. Uh, that's one thing we'll notice about them. Anyway, once we get through, we'll kind of give our understanding of where we feel each of these tools fit, if they're the same, if they're a little different, um, what have you. And then what I may do is kind of end up just making repetitive cuts until um, we wear out the batteries and see which one ends first. So anyway, let's uh, first chalk up the, uh, the aluminum tube here. And let's look, my really expensive calipers here. So it looks like three quarter inch basically is what that is. So we'll take the Ryobi up first, by the way, both these are fully charged batteries and uh, we're gonna go in forward. Again, like I said, SciTech, uh, brand new three eighths inch Arbor blades, three inch blades, and we'll start and make three cuts. So cuts through that, no problem whatsoever. Cut that like a boss, like a champ. So let's go to the Milwaukee, again forward, and we'll make three cuts here. So I must say, if just off of that, it felt like the Ryobi might have had an edge right there. Um, again, I didn't push them, but I did feel like the, the Ryobi kind of pushed its way or cut its way through a little bit quicker. So let's change substrates here and let's go to a piece of flat bar steel. Okay, so we'll go back to the Ryobi. Three cuts here. Okay, cut through that pretty good, but you could hear it definitely starting to bog a little bit because I was pushing it just a little bit harder than we did in the aluminum. So three cuts here. Yeah, not bad. I, I, I must say I was expecting to see a difference maybe to the Ryobi. But on those cuts, I really, again, felt like the same tool to me. Didn't feel like a lot of difference there. Um, so let's change this out and we'll go to this, uh, this is half inch solid rod here. And this is an old axle out of something. Um, and you may be asking why I'm not using rebar. A lot of people like to use rebar. I don't like to use rebar because rebar is a trash metal. In other words, there's hard spots and soft spots. And if you've ever cut it, you'll notice one section will cut really easy. The next section, section may cut really hard. It's because there's a lot of hard spots in rebar. It's just a, a real trashy material. Um, whereas a piece of steel is going to be more evenly distributed as far as the hardness goes. So anyway, there's a little two cents for you. Um, so we'll go back to the Ryobi and again, we'll make three cuts here.
There's two. Now what we're going to do, we're going to time this cut. We're going to time this one. I'm going to start the clock as soon as I start cutting. So 1541 was what it took to cut that third cut, and I'll do the same with the Milwaukee. I'll let the first two cut kind of on its own, and then I'll go to the stopwatch on that. We've got two bars left. Okay, so this could get interesting because this tool was going in cutout mode while I was cutting through there. So I'll be interested to see if I can feather this through to try to get it to keep from cutting out and get a time on this cut. So as soon as I start cutting, I will start the clock. Thirty-nine fifty-four, so quite a bit of difference. Definitely went into cutout a few times. Now I will say, not taking up for the Milwaukee, but I'm just saying you can see either tool cutting half inch, a, a lot of half inch rod. That's probably not the tool you want to do that with. Go to your four and a half inch grinder with a full four and a half inch cutoff wheel. That's the tool you want to use for that. But when you look at these two tools. The Ryobi definitely powered through that cut a lot quicker than Milwaukee. I'm going to do it once again just to see that. Okay, it looks like it either Either the battery's dead or the tool's in cutout mode. I don't think the tool's in cutout mode. I think the battery's dead because if it's in cutout mode, I think the lights flash or something like that. So we did kill the battery. So it looks like the Milwaukee lasts longer on a battery. So definitely looks like you're lasting longer on the Milwaukee, but as far as power through the cut, that's going to have to go to the Ryobi. Okay, so the Ryobi is dead, no battery left in her, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the Milwaukee. It looks like we're still at two bars, and we're gonna see how many more cuts we can get out of that. Okay, that's one. <laughs> that's struggling to make it through for sure without going through cutoff. So I'm going to go ahead, you know what, I'm going to chalk up some one inch again. I can't push it at all. I'm going to call that dead. So you get a few more cuts with the Milwaukee. 
uh, than the Ryobi, but more power on the Ryobi, as we said. Okay, you saw it. The Ryobi has a little more power to be able to power through those cuts. At the same time, as far as runtime, would have to go to Milwaukee. Now, I will say, a little word of caution, that neither one of these tools are heavy-duty tools. These aren't meant to cut big stuff. In fact, even that, that half-inch uh, steel had a rough time cutting through there. So when you're needing to do big cuts, you still need to reach for that four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel on it. Uh, now at the same time, what are these tools used for? Well, they're great for those little oddball projects or when you're in a pinch and you have to make those cuts and you can take a little more time to do it, they're great. You can see how filthy this tool is. It gets used all the time, albeit we know its limitations. So again, don't expect this to replace your pneumatic cutoff wheel. It's not going to do that. Now, will it aid in being able, to, being able to get places where you don't have an air compressor and things like that? Absolutely, that's what it's meant for. Also, the bi-directional on both of these really is a handy feature, so you can throw those sparks in a different way if you want to. Uh, both of them come with a 3 8 and 7 16 inch arbor adapter, so that makes it nice where you can run 3 8 wheels or uh, 7 8, or 7 16 inch wheels. Um, both of them come with their hex keys, and one comes with kind of a cutting foot, and the other one comes with an adapter where you can, you know, catch, uh, extract dust, things like that. I don't use this much. I, I cut mostly metal and I guess you could cut, you could catch some of that residual, but I don't bother to, but that may be important to you. Uh, price wise, you're looking at about 139 bare tool for the M12, uh, and for the Ryobi 18 volt, the HP, you're looking at $99 for the bare tool. Uh, this is a three-year warranty. I believe the Milwaukee is a five-year warranty. If it's not, I'll have it right here in the bottom uh, where you can see it. But I believe this is a five-year warranty on this one. So what would I suggest? I would suggest if you have Ryobi tools and you have batteries, buy the Ryobi. If you have Milwaukee tools and you have the M12 batteries already, buy the Milwaukee. Not trying to cop out there, but it's just they're that close. Uh, is there a difference, as we saw, in the power? Yeah, the, the edge would have to go to the 18-volt Ryobi. But again, runtime-wise, the Milwaukee. But you could argue that with, with battery size on that as well. Uh, check them out for yourselves. We think they're pretty close tools. So if price matters, that's your choice. Uh, again, if power matters, if runtime matters, whatever you think matters to you, buy that in regards to what we've seen here. So check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you like this video. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down, but let us know in the comments why. Have a great day and keep smiling.